Good evening, good morrow, and good day, and welcome to another edition of Slice and Dice here with the Many Lands campaign. Joined, of course, uh, by the venerable team of D&D players. Hello, everyone. For those of you hello. who hello, uh, for those of you who uh, missed the last session, that was of course two weeks ago. You can catch up now on our YouTube channel, but don't go right this second, for this is a live stream, and you will of course miss out on all the shenanigans today. But a great place to catch up, nonetheless, on the entire campaign so far on our YouTube channel. There's a link to it on our Twitch page. If you uh, just scroll down from the video, you'll see catch up and the YouTube logo. Nice and easy. Um, as Speaking of uh, other things to plug... Shameless, shameless plug. plug! If you haven't done so already, uh, now is a great time to pick up with The Cage, our uh, second campaign, which was running last Monday. Uh, we've got another session coming uh, to you live on... Well, not live, but coming to you for premiere on YouTube uh, next Monday. Uh, and uh, there we've had now... Was it se I think that was our eighth session, wasn't it, uh, Angelique? Of that, I think so. I'm Something like that. But, um, it right. mm -hmm. uh, but session, but session seven, uh, called "Oh Shit," is uh, mm -hmm. is up on our YouTube, uh, and it's aptly named for things do indeed go sideways, including uh, fecal matter. Uh, not not literally, of course, but uh, yeah, things go down in in session seven. So definitely check that out. Also on our YouTube channel. Sideways and down, sort of down. <laughs> and down. I'm, con <laughs> just... I'm concerned by the non-literal fecal matter. Yeah, As in shit happens. I think, think literally. I'd be more concerned no if it was literal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite. Uh, Shameless <laughs> plug. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you haven't checked out our uh, World Anvil page, there is new stuff going up there over the course of, well, the last week and over the next few weeks, there's going to be a few new articles cropping up on there. The uh, release of such articles is is basically dependent on where we get to with the campaign here, dependent with the party, because obviously we don't want to give too much away before the guys get there. So um, depending on where they end up going is uh, dependent on which articles will be released and in what order but there's some new stuff up already uh, about the dragon gods um, there is a link to that on our discord we've got a discord channel now that we uh, link all of the world anvil uh, law dumps as they are dumped um, so yeah go join our discord if you haven't done so already and again there's a link to that as well it's just there's links for days on this page come join us yes exactly about it. exactly come join us come join Single us forever dumps this is just yeah Big, massive dumps um, on uh, on Slice and Dice. Sorry, I just had to get that in there. <laughs> uh, okay, now I understand it that none of you guys have any shameless plugs of your own before you do. Oh, yes, DK, go ahead. No, I was just adjusting my light. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, we could we could all take a minute for the pizza that I. I was going to say lost, that before yeah. we start today, um, DK had a bit of a tragic loss before the start of the session, um, as he went to come on to uh, the live stream on, onto our um, video chat. Uh, he accidentally knocked his pizza on the floor. The whole thing has gone to waste and been thrown in the bin. So if we could take a moment just to remember the pizza. Hmm. F's in chat. F's in chat. F's in chat. All right, I think that's probably more than enough. <laughs> uh, without any further ado, let's jump in then with tonight's session of the Many Lands campaign. By the way, we have a new intro video. Here we go.
Well, okay, we are back. I have to say, um, we should have done a reaction video for that because the guy, the guys, were some quality wow. one-liners during that, uh, yeah. such as the sky elephant. Thank you, Bart. That was amazing. Um, uh, <laughs> for Mama. Anyway, uh, last time uh, in the Many Lands campaign, you guys uh, were um, uh, had finally happened upon, well, or had been led to, should I say, uh, the Eerie, to, and had uh, sort of. Um, <clears throat> made your way stealthily inside via a back passage um, which you were led to by Master Talon who you helped uh, Malar cured her wounds and uh, restored her health as she was badly injured trying to escape from the Eerie um, and she led you back through uh, a secret passageway to her chambers uh, where she gave um, Brina the, um, the recipe for the potion of uh, cure ancient curses which um, you guys had been after. There was no potion there, however, just the recipe which she handed over to Brina. And you guys were there to kind of witness uh, the manticores uh, doing their dastardly business. Um, but you were there also to free the prisoners. So while uh, Leobrin major imaged a dragon to scare the shit out of the manticores, which worked to, to great effect, Brucon then scurried across to the other side of the Eerie, which is basically the hollowed out insides of a of an uh, inactive volcano to go and try and free the prisoners and found one uh, Will um, uh, Tinder who was in his cage uh, his cell which was kept outside of the main storage area but you gathered more of the uh, of those folk who were inside the prisoners so anyway uh, to try and give himself more cover because it's quite an open space Brucon let loose his ever smoking bottle uh, to create some camouflage because it covers great uh, especially with aerial creatures so that was a very good call or you could just yeah, vape your way out of the situation um, and I mean, literally Brucon's response to being in peril is to just vape really aggressively <laughs> and then flee at high speed uh, so eventually he's going to he's gonna get winded uh, <laughs> anyway um, as, as for the rest of you uh, you then kind of take on the assault of uh, uh, of the the manticores, but before you can really do so, confusion kind of <coughs> takes hold as uh, winged wyvern riders, uh, dragonborn wyvern riders uh, appear. Um, so real dragon kind amongst the the illusory dragon kind, uh, causing havoc, and they start fighting the manticores. Now you guys kind of get involved in in the fray. Uh, with the leader Mangefer rallying two of the manticores to attack uh, the three of you on the ground, Malar, Seth and Leobrin. Two of you get knocked unconscious at different points during that. It was touch and go, but Seth eventually manages to slay uh, the beast, uh, Mangefer, and the other two then beat a retreat. While this is going on, Neris gets abducted by the Wyvern Riders, who seem to take an, a, a special interest in her. Yet again, Neris got abducted. It's like the third time this has happened. Like, come on, guys, what the fuck? Anyway, they but this time they don't actually take her away from the Eerie, so that makes a change. They instead put her to one side uh, and kind of guard her from everyone else, not wanting anyone else to approach. But they are no match for one drunken master monk with stunning strike powers and redirecting strikes. And Brucon uh, enters the fray, managing to whisk up an unconscious Neris uh, and get her into the smoke cloud with himself. And Brina, of course, who came to join him. Uh, to relative safety. While meanwhile, the the monks of the Eerie are um, are standing in their various nests, chanting some of them, uh, causing this uh, disruption. This wind, kind of like a tornado, essentially, in this uh, around the perimeter of the Eerie um, and within as well, knocking about a lot of you. Uh, eventually, though, you guys uh, this subsides, and you end up face to face with uh, three of these uh, dragonborn wyvern riders who have taken an interest in all of you in fact they believe you to be spies for working on behalf of the burican republic against the dragonborn kingdom of brachir which is where they hail from uh, across the border and you establish from them thanks to brina's use of zone of truth making sure everyone's honest that uh, they believe that you have encroached I at the border into brachir and are in their lands uh, and were told by their source that you were in fact spies basically working with the manticores as a declaration of war but master talon is very quick to defend you saying this isn't the case and you you know plead your case as well to them and they seem to be convinced thanks to zone of truth as much as anything else that you guys aren't spies or at least not knowing these spies for burakrin 
Um, but they have a special interest in Nera's skill, uh, noting that her red eyes and uh, patches of scales is a sign of Ushtag. And obviously her propensity for fire magic is, uh, is an extra layer on that. The great red dragon from times gone by. In fact, the great red dragon that at one point uh, his conquest meant that he ended up um, running the entirety of the ma many lands. It became all under his domain at one point. Uh, the Dragonborn Kingdom of Rachir are not friends of Ushtag, as you gather, and they wish to take Neris back to their king, King Zandak, uh, for, to see what he has to say about uh, this person with the mark of Ushtag. I feel very attacked right now. Yep. Fortunately for Neris, though, Brina had turned her, in, her invisible whilst under the smoke cloud, meaning that Neris could kind of scamper away Although Neris hasn't been able to find a way out of the eerie as yet. She has found a hidey hole, one of the nests, uh, while invisible, but hasn't managed to find her way out. The rest of you, however, um, have agreed as part of the negotiation with the uh, Dragon Ball to have a little bit of time to discuss your options, really. What what are you going to do? Because for most of you, there's places you need, want to go back in uh, back in Burekrin. You've got business that you need to attend to. Um, so that's where we pick things up today with you guys going off to one side to have this discussion. So, <laughs> who'd Keep like talk. to go first? Um, Brucon, uh, so so we're all, are we still in the, the big central chamber with the um, the Rachiri Dragonborn? Indeed, uh, yeah. You've, you've taken yourself to one side, but you're within eye shot, yeah. How far, uh, what about ear shot? Oh, um... I would say you you could go a respectable distance so that you could, with lowered voices, yeah, not be overheard. Seems fair in a negotiation. Okay, well, as as we do that, um, Brucon says aloud, I'm not saying that Neris is here, but if she is, um, we're going to have a chat. Just FYI, uh, and then head over to the, the convocation spot. Um, and goes, is there right. a way that Neris can scoot closer? I don't know where, how far away she is. Oh, by all means, yeah. I mean, if you if you hear that, which you would, um, it's quite yes. an echoey place anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, it it was pretty straightforward how you traversed the the terrain. So yeah, you can how, scamper back. Um, and one slightly meta question: uh, Brucon turns to Brina and goes, uh, "That was your doing, right? You, you, you're the one who uh, yeah." Her heart. Um, how long? How long until she sort of pops back into visibility? Well, we don't have very long. Uh, she can hide like that for an hour if nothing breaks my concentration. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> Brucon positions himself so that he is like uh, between Brina and the Dragonborn as much as possible. Mm -hmm. He's kind of like um, uh, human shield or dwarf shield. I beg your pardon. Um, uh, <laughs> And looks around and goes, uh, right. Oh. So, what are we thinking? Do you want to use Jack for a sec there? No, I, I just had to um, mm -hmm. reset some things at my end, but you're all ah, good. You're back. Yeah. Cool. So, we need to get out of here with all the prisoners. Yep. Uh, should we just ask the Arakrok, since we don't, we're not fighting the Arakrok, we can just ask them to release their prisoners, they're not their enemies. Well, Get I'm, them to bring them uh, in. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill the voice for a, an extended internal chat, by the way. Um, uh, and a, another thought occurs, which is that the Arakokra are the reason that they're here. Could they not also be the reason why they become not here? Yeah, well, let's just get them to... Although, although, and I'm not saying that this would be a deal-breaker, but I do feel like that scenario might involve uh, Arakokra becoming suddenly very intimately acquainted with the concept of air defences. Uh, which is a giant horde of Arakokra descend on Hilberg. Um, that that might end slightly badly, but uh, I, again, not saying that's a deal breaker. Yeah, I think we should still escort the Arakokra to the meeting point, because the mm. Moonrunners will have all the carriages for all the people. We don't yep. want the Arakokra to get hurt. And they would be targets. Do we not? To kidnap them. <laughs> and we don't no. actively want them. <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to go as neutral. <laughs> I'm, I'm going Switzerland <laughs> on this one. No, that's okay. not true, actually. No, Brucon is actually a bit. Brucon cares <laughs> more. 
to like he, he wants to keep them on side enough to get answers to his questions. I think is his very contribution. So probably you just want to learn to agree. fly. Yeah. Seth, are you kidding me? Did you see when I took the potion of flying? It was dope. This is why you don't get any more flying potions. Seth, in language you would understand, if the Aarakocker turn against us, if we don't help them, they have no reason to keep us safe from these Wyvern Riders. Right now it's the Master's word that we're not spies that keeps us safe. It's a good thing we're best friends with them now. See? I knew you'd see it my way. As you, as you says that, I'm going to go, excuse me, Master Talon. And just be very, very polite to him. <laughs> Uh, she she kind of look, looks up to you, the uh, white dove-like uh, Aarakocra, and uh, sort of flutters over to your position. Yes, can I help? Hello, hello, great master. Um, <laughs> would you be able to, since, since the battle is over and the manticores are gone, would you be able to get your Aarakocra to release the prisoners so that we can escort them safely home so no harm comes to... Oh, then were you our crocker? Oh yes, of course. Uh, some of our own, in fact, have been uh, captured. I will, uh, yes, I will oversee that. And she uh, so starts uh, heading off to some of her, some of her uh, subordinates, uh, issuing orders. Thank you, Grandmaster Talon. And then go back to the group. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're staying friends. Got it. Okay, but we don't. So, so the. Okay, so taking the prisoners back, and we know there are some people who have things they they themselves want to do back in Hilberg, and they are. Uh, Malar wants to go back, I think. Although naturally, I mentioned this just as DK steps away. Um, uh, he but, yeah, he has things yeah. back in Hilberg for sure. Yeah. Who else has? Yeah, he, he wants. Uh, I think it's mostly Malar wants to revive, uh, save the werewolf person. Yeah, so I think that's it. mostly it. We're still not ready to save Stone Lady. <laughs> yeah, do we, we also to... need to go check on fleeting? Yeah, do we need someone to go back and get Lady Grenfell? Um, uh, are we? Are we? Ju is this just going to be the travelling show now? Like when she one day she'll be revived and like, where the hell am I? Like, it's been yeah, twenty sorry. years. Yeah. Where am I? <laughs> it's been twenty uh, years, she's... two and a half thousand miles, but we did save she's... you. Yeah. She's safe in the church. For now, we just need to focus on getting Nerys out. Yeah. I think if she, if when the Arakrok could come back, we get one of them to take her with the people first, so that you know they she just mixes in invisibly amongst the people being escorted out. So does that mean we're so so we're, none of us are going with these guys back to Rajir then? Raise his hand. Does anyone want to be kidnapped by women? So, so just like out of discussion, out of character discussion, just for my memory, <clears throat> um, we don't trust that these guys would stay and wait They've for said the rest of the party. Oh, they, they said they wouldn't. They, they right. said they're, 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 they've given us an hour. Yeah, that's, that, all right. That's their like you, you, our window is one hour, and then yeah. they're going, and their intent is to take you, Neris, with them when they go. Get yes, your affairs uh, in order. You have an hour, effectively. Yes, I would like to leave. Thank you, <laughs> and not with them. <laughs> so, let's. So yes, so sorry. How, how, well, when the Arakrok will come back with the prisoners, we just all leave with them. Uh, yes, yeah, I mean. They won't yeah. let us, though. That's we said that, and what? they. No, we, we no, no, they, they, we, we're fine. We're fine. It's it's specifically Neris. Oh yeah, but how they, do they, we... they, they, in place of Neris, they could take all of you guys. That's what I'm thinking. I think that if she's not there, it'd be a hostage situation. They're not going to let us go. Yeah, they're not going to let us go. I think we Definitely. could probably escape. We've got the Arakrocka to help us. We've, we've helped save their people. We passed their test. The master will help us. Uh, okay, hang on. Uh, worth discussing, but let's let's just focus the minds a little bit here. Can I get a hit point check? Mm. How is it? Uh, great. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm alright, actually. 
Yeah, Brukov is pretty well stocked. Uh, actually, I, I think we, I think there was a, a, a brief bit of healing being doled around at the end of the last. I'm at nineteen, not uh, terrible, twenty. Yeah. I'm like thirty something. Uh, I don't have any spells or magic left, but yeah. I imagine Malos not, not looking too healthy head. either. I don't oh, have a lot not, left either. Not in a place to uh, fight. Let's put it like that. Yeah. So, so if we're making an escape, we want sneaky rather than um, mm -hmm. aggressive. Should anyone who's like not very sneaky start to escape now? I mean, we don't need to get far. There are wyverns on giant dragon things, and we came through lots of caverns where so... flying isn't an option. While they talk this through, because of the time limit mentioned, uh, Neris is gonna have another perception check for a uh, an exit that she couldn't. Yeah, sure. Um, by all means, that's make a perception check. Alrit. Alrit. Pavel, we all appear to have quit. quit Nineteen it. on the dice. Nice. That Which was, is that's a plus hell of a four. That's. Reaction. 23. Well, last time it was 8 or 9 or oh, well, something. Well, that's so true. Like, that's true. Yeah. You, I'm think, like, yeah, progress. Seven. Uh, this, okay. So, having another look this time. Okay. So, you uh, notice um, the uh, ruffle of a, of a breeze uh, going through uh, some of your uh, comrades' clothing. And that draws your attention to uh, a larger um, uh, cavern to one side. Which would appear it's much larger than the entrances that you've seen to to most of the nests. Uh, so this would appear to be a route out somewhere. Uh, in addition to that, you also notice uh, the uh, some of the Arakokka are busying themselves uh, freeing the prisoners, uh, and you notice a an interesting selection of uh, of creatures being uh, marched out from the. Um, from the storage area. This includes uh, Aracocra. You recognize Beak amongst them, uh, looking fairly battered and bruised, but uh, alive. You also uh, you also unmistakably, with a 23, spot Jackman Winklebottom in his dashing green velvet suit uh, being removed, uh, alongside um, the boy as well from earlier that Brucon was attempting to free. But you see that the Wyvern Riders well, also okay, seem to have taken interest in these prisoners. Sorry, go ahead. No, nothing. No, sorry. Who's who's taken interest in these prisoners? Sorry. Uh, the Dragonborn have taken an interest in God. them. Damn it. Did we know Jackbin was here? That yeah. You yeah. had an inkling. None of you spotted him outright, but you there was a check which you kind of failed to, to spot him. <laughs> But we, we, but we kind of joined the dots that there was because there yeah. was some rumors and stuff like we, we yes and you got a message happened. from sorry you got a message from Greenblade telling you that Green, that he'd been captured so yeah but you didn't see him as such but yes yes but you, we you were had, aware we heard him when we were next to the second test and the that's the one that's passed. the one you failed so I couldn't tell you outright who it was but you got yeah something from that yeah that's it so what I want to do is I'm gonna come down from the nest towards the the team i'm guessing how i'm how i'm seeing it is that there's sort of more towards the edge of this place i don't know how else to say it but like just basically to say without the dragonborn necessarily hearing that i'm i'm going for the exit where they're taking the prisoners out and uh okay like i said so... i'll i'll meet them and figure at last let's meet where the big snake was outside of any magical ways of doing this <coughs> I, which i not sure if you have um oh, oh the... i can't i can't speak no you can speak but of course you're probably going to be heard by them so the only way you could do that would be by getting close to the party whilst invisible and whispering to them which you can of course do yes you just that, need to make a I mean. stealth check uh to, to get over there without being noticed with advantage for being in... oh yeah with, for, with advantage for being invisible yay yeah. okay thank Goodness for advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Very worthy advantage. Thank you, mean, yes. Thank um, you. Yes. Thank. Thank you, Bart. And thank no, you, Brina. Brina. I'm not making. Uh, Sixteen. I definitely wasn't Bart. Like searching for a compliment. But, but Bart. <laughs> Bart was. You. <laughs> Bart reminded both of us. Right. Sixteen. Sixteen. Sixteen is fair enough. Um, they the dragonborn don't seem to have much. Uh, be paying too much attention to your group. 
uh, as I said, they seem to have taken an interest in the prisoners who are being led out at this time as well. So you can sneak over without any interference. Go ahead. Yay. Well, I, I, I tell them I'm going for the exit where they're taking the prisoners out. And if we all get split up, let's... Uh, we will all get split up, so let's meet where the big snake was. Makes sense. That's good. That's something. That's a location mostly only we would know. <laughs> yep. 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 Uh, us and, and, and right. anyone who saw the. I oh, know it went back under the water a bit, so there like, isn't. Nobody turn to... around to face me. <laughs> it's not a. Uh, yeah, quite. I was just thinking. We're like, <laughs> what? What's going on? Um, yes. Thank everyone, you, Neris, who's definitely here. <laughs> roll a nonchalant check. <laughs> yeah, we're just sort of like, yep. Yeah. This guy's be cool. I rolled an eighteen on styling it out. I did not. Oh roll it. wow! <laughs> you guys, uh, you, it's like it's like you're sitting at a park bench reading a newspaper, and then somebody else who doesn't look like you know them at all has come and sat next to you on the park bench, <laughs> and then moments also later you've started... folded up newspaper and left. <laughs> That's how subtle it's been. <laughs> so many newspapers right now everybody instantly gets <laughs> newspapers <laughs> it's like sunglasses trilby yeah. french coat the works we're all right. just whistling the same out of time <laughs> each other, just... yeah. seth's just so... wandering around kicking a couple of stones whistling yeah lovely times staring at the sky um so yeah you, you do this yes. and are you heading out immediately naris is that the plan yeah, pretty much. Yeah, cool. Because um, time is of the essence, and I want to make use of the yeah, whole invisibility an thing. Sure. I mean, <laughs> you don't need to roll stealth again, because it would be the same. Yay! So you know, stealth, stealthy, 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 and you start <laughs> stealthing towards the exit, and you can see uh, that some of these uh, prisoners are start, start to be led towards the exit as well, with Aracocra accompanying them. Uh, and then you all see one of the wyverns uh, that have been down below with their rider upon it take off and land immediately in front of the uh, the prisoners barring their exit from the uh, from the eerie and the lead one who's still on foot um calls over to you uh i said before that uh we were going to take what we wanted with us we were going to take the elf so maybe if you are looking to leave here we should have something that guarantees you will return with the elf. You want to do free these, yes? So he's talking to us, yeah? The, he's the, talking the directly at you guys, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Brucon goes, well, I stabbed myself in the sternum to, uh, for her once, and, and I'm actually okay with um, staying here for a little bit to uh, have a conversation with Master Talon here. I uh, have some questions, so uh, will, I, will I do? Will I suffice? I mean, I did come here to rescue her. Make a make a persuasion check, Brucon. And I mean, none of us have seen her. Ooh. What what do you expect us to do? He's making it our problem, I think. Uh, persuasion, right? Come on. Uh, okay, twelve. Twelve. Uh, now you see the steely eyes of uh, this dragonborn look Brucon up and down. He doesn't look impressed at what he sees with Brucon. And you know, for most of you, kind of can see there is some, there is some suspicion of, um, uh, among about the dwarf, uh, about how he regards the dwarf. Given that you know he last time they saw him, he took Neris and ran ran in, w with smoke in tow, and the next thing she's disappeared. So he's kind of suspect number one. Hmm. Brucon and... sus. <laughs> oh no! The session ends with Brucon ejected into the vacuum of space. No. <laughs> uh, I'm in fair. You can stay if you wish, but uh, these are these are perhaps more collateral for your companions. The the uh, the I was mean, gesturing to the the prisoners as he says these. It, yes, indeed. Dick move. So, uh, sorry, Mr. Dragon person. I'm just a little bit confused. You Drez. come here to... Drez of Clan Lambold. Yes. Charmed, yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so you've come here to stop the manticores from kidnapping people. 
Yes. And your solution to this after the fact is to kidnap people. No, our goals have changed slightly. We were, of course, here to remove the manticores. We have done so, yes. But now we have spotted one with the mark of Ushtag, and they need to come with us. And since they are with you, we have to find ways of persuading you to bring her to us. Okay, so you've lost the person you're looking for, and your solution is kidnap people. Well, you can find her, yes. You know her better than we. Not really. Yeah, those, those, those two things don't really <laughs> match up. Yes, we do know her better than you. No, that does not mean we can find an invisible elf who really doesn't want to be found. Well, I you mean, see, what... you are, we agree, not spies from Burekrin. So us going into Burekrin looking for your elf friend would be a declaration of war, yes? Yep. So we what want to avoid this. Burekrin? I don't see why she would go into Rachir, but sure, if she did, we would find her soon enough. I'm just not seeing the logic in kidnapping people when we don't know where she is. It's a it's a I power mean, play. We, I, I, I mean, just, we can prove we we can prove just it. Just want to say, like, like uh, then go look for her in Rachir. Come on, <laughs> off you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we we can we can prove it. Brina, zone of truth us. Um. You sure you want to do that? Zona truth me. No! Oh, now, now, wait, wait, wait. I think I have a solution to all of this. Uh, let me just, uh, <laughs> Mr. Seth, that's an interesting point. Uh, let me just try something. And I'm going to cast, uh, what am I going to cast? Calm Emotion at third level. Okay. On this guy. Nice. Uh, and, uh, what uh, save is that? It is a charisma, charisma save. Charisma. All right. What was the DC? What was the DC? Fifteen. All right. You, it succeeds. Got a thirteen. Uh, I want to make him indifferent about uh, creatures of my choice that it is somewhat hostile. Okay. Including us and Nerith. Small indifferent people towards around. you guys. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, if you, uh, if you don't mind, I think we'll uh, be going. It's not like... Go, go, go. Uh, sure. And goes, well, I'll, I'll still be here. Oh, you can leave if you want. There's no know, bones to us. Already, I've already said quite clearly that I want to stay, but anyway, yeah, the, the rest of you guys should, uh, should skadoodle. It'd be I, great I if you could that. bring the elf back to us, though, yes? If we see her, sure, we'll no point her your way. Sure, we will keep the prisoners in the meantime. What? Yeah. No, prisoners are, have to go home, otherwise you're the, then the kidnappers who have taken them, and you will be starting a war because you're kidnapping children now. To be clear, this is this is because Mallow, you, 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 didn't, you didn't make them indifferent to the prisoners, just to you guys, right? Just, just checking, okay. I, I was <laughs> trying to get all the prisoners as well, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Right now, I'm willing to run with the. We've got a pass. Yeah, yeah, you've got a pass. Um, <clears throat> that's okay. We can wait. We're not in a hurry. Brukon, uh, Brukon goes. Um, uh, if the prisoners were staying here, would they still be? Would you be intending to keep them in cages? I mean, that seems like a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of responsibility. You'd have to feed them, <sighs> muck them out, all of that stuff. It seems seems frankly more than. More than is worth your your while. Is that what is that what the mothers of he of Burekrin tell you about to the Dragonborn of Rachia? No, our hospitality is far better than that. We will make sure they are fed and watered and free to roam the inside of this place. Of course, we just will not allow them to leave until you return. They will, of course, be well looked after. Sold. Brigon <laughs> turns around and and does it like an elaborate eyebrow waggle. Um, at the others and goes, I mean, that seems reasonable to me, don't you think, guys? Yes, uh, let's all leave. Fuck the I, prisoners. Let's go. Can I just... I'll, I'll look at the dragonborn and kind of nervously shuffle forward. 
I just want to make sure you will not harm them. Would you mind being exposed to my spell again and say that again? Ah, little one with the little wand, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> and I cast Zone of Truth only on him. And he willingly fails, doesn't doesn't even attempt this time. Because she has no reason to, he's not hostile to you guys. Sure. Rather Mala. Just uh, <clears throat> out, high, up, high on life. So once once it's cast, she'll ask, will the prisoners be safe in your care? Yes, of course they will be safe. Okay. Then. Um, we'll... While that's while Brin is doing that, Brucon sidles over to uh, Leobrin and under his sotto voce kind of goes, "You can't do um, those, that, that illusion kind of stuff uh, that you were doing before again, can you?" Uh, I can do um yes what do we, what, what 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 do we need can you do a fake nearest i the problem with doing a fake anything is um physical interaction i can't do the the physical side of a fake thing so if they were to say uh try and bound her handcuff or indeed lift her up onto a wyvern or have her sit on a wyvern and the wyvern not move under zero like the wyvern would move under zero weight because yeah okay uh Maris is she she would have it, it would be a visual effect not a physical effect i can try okay. but do we want to um aggravate them prove our uh, faithlessness untrustworthy nature i mean if it gets the prisoners out then uh that that, that arguably is a, a good benefit but you make a good point so we need to we, we, we need to um try and make sure that they're not going to uh discover the if we're going to do this we need to discover make sure they don't discover about the ruse until they're well clear hmm. even with me um, i was so, looking around to see if uh to size up the the various cages and stuff and see if there's some way he can figure I out can, a way of oh, yeah i could i could make a fake nearest that ran away um but only up to 120 feet away and then it would uh disappear yeah could work uh brucon starts kind of looking around and trying to, he's, he's got an idea about creating some kind of like palanquin cell kind mm. of thing that the, the for the women to take so that they're not actively interacting with the illusory neris um so he's kind of looking at uh, you know the, so there were these cages that the little people mm. were in and kind of trying to figure out dimensions and whether they're because i remember you saying it was like metal spikes basically just coming up out of the ground uh for the one that will match uh, yeah with no like. roof yeah yeah okay um are, are, are there, can you see more of them um, so yeah, you saw more of them, but they were inside the storage area. Um, these ones, rather than looking like they've been built into the floor, they have been placed there. Right. Okay. How big are they? Um, roughly the same size. So you're talking. Um, it's going to be a, a five by ten. <laughs> so five five feet uh, square uh, on the floor, ten, feet, ten high. feet high. Yeah. I mean that sounds kind of perfect. To be fair. Um, so Brucon kind of again leaning in, you know, we're all being we're, we're being extremely um, uh, casual and kind of like uh, casual Brucon leaning. kind of leans in. Brucon leans in and goes, "Let uh, check my thinking on this one. We produce Neris in order to convince them to release the prisoners. Uh, Neris, um, but we say that she has to travel in style, and we deck out one of those cells like a palanquin sort of thing." Um, and then you cast, you, you get her to go in, and then we uh, run like hell. Oh, um, do you really think that we can uh, outrun those on the backs of Wyverns, Mr. Brucon? I mean, the, the, uh, how, how long? Brucon how long can. Would the how long would the illusory? I mean, I know I can, by the way, um, but, but I accept, I acknowledge that other people exist. Um, 
how how long does um how long does uh, is this major image we're talking about right major image 10 minutes um uh, and okay. but only within 120 feet of me yeah. And I would still Which argue is quite that they're a distance, not just, but they're not just if they're on wyvern. They're not just going to watch her step into your palanquin. They're going to want to find her. Um, Marta, if you're saying something, you're muted, I think. Just saying ow, because I just really hit my leg hard. <laughs> thing. Let's have a moment of silence for Marta's so leg. So it was good. Yes, F. Press F in chat for my leg, because <laughs> it really hurts. F for leg. F for leg. Press F. <laughs> F the leg. <laughs> <For> the leg. <laughs> mm. uh, anyway. Yeah, meanwhile, um Brucon Brucon uh, mutters back. Yeah, it's it's a fair point, but I was I was I was thinking we could kind of make a big show of you know, her being unable to um escape out of the top so that it, you know they're not too worried about her being like but what if she's in a cage that she can't escape from what does it matter if her hands are bound can i just try talking to the dragonborn one more time as long as you don't you, uh, hmm. uh -huh. what, are you, what are you what are you planning on saying i want to tr i want to figure out their logic of it's like hey can you go and search all of bureaucrine for this person, by the way, the, all the people that you'll probably need to ask, when they ask, hey, where are the children? And we say, oh, Rachir are keeping them kidnapped. <laughs> How they're expect, expecting to not start a war. That That's a, a good, good idea. Go, yeah, go for it. So I'm going to go over to that. Seth the Diplomat, we're all doomed. We are all going to go. Right go. I'm just going to go gonna say, and draw up my next character. Excuse me, sir. Yes. I, so, look, we've we've known Neris for a little while, and we uh, do know where she like. We, and we is can, the zone we can of truth maybe... still up? Sorry, um, Brina. Uh, on him it is. Yes. Because it's in an area, so if Seth's coming over. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, he will have to make the save if he if he's going to, because it's thirty feet. Um... That's fine. I'll I'll fail. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Go you can't know anything. In fact, you have you feel compelled to tell uh, the truth. Fifteen feet, sorry. By this, no, yeah. uh, by this wand. So, Go, Go ahead. So you want us to search all of Rachir, uh, all of Burakrin, for Neris, mm. who has escaped. We've not seen her since the ba I've not seen her since the before the battle started. And true. you want us to go back to Burakrin to try and find her. So the the place we'll probably have to search. It's your bug. You know, uh, we believe uh, she she may have a few family members there. I'm not sure how if she has any how much family she has. But to go there, we ha we have to report back because we were sent to, you know, go find kidnapped children. So when they say why are you returning without the children, we'll have to tell them because Rachir have kidnapped them until we give them other citizens. I thought you didn't want to start a war. This doesn't seem like the best idea to get what you want and not start a war of, hey, we're keeping children until you give us a certain person who helped save children, who could be viewed as a hero to the people. Ah, it is true that you could tell them that, yes, but whether they believe you is another question indeed. But when we go, we'll have to have a fair conversation. We'll have to stand in a zone of truth. That is true. You would have to do that, yes. And we wouldn't be able to lie that you are keeping children hostage until you get your demand. The thing is, my friend, that... Uh... If you were to make such an accusation, the Dragonborn Kingdom of Rachir would of course deny that. And then it is just your word against the kingdoms, and, well, if that were to cause a war, it is not down to me. And again, we'd be standing in the zone of truth. Eventually, you, you don't seem evil people. Eventually, you'd free the children. The children would spread how the dragons came and kept them captive from their families. Try to kill the people that 
uh, tried to save them. So, may I make a suggestion? Okay, so... Sorry, I was waiting for a verbal thing. I can't see you as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're, you're very small on my screen. So, you let the children go with us. We take them back to the families. Everyone in Burakran's happy. We tell them how Rachir helped with stopping the manticores, saving their children. You know, the truth, as we've been saying. And then we will find Neris. As it, we've got an idea of where family is, so we can see if we can speak to them about it. And then we will return. Again, the truth here. We will return to speak with you about what you want because you said you knew something about Neris she had a mark or something we will happily return once we've concluded uh, make a Brucon persuasion check forward. with advantage uh, sorry sorry go ahead Brucon you can you can add add to this might affect the DC uh, uh, let, let's see uh, uh, Br Brucon steps forward but doesn't immediately launch into a spiel uh, let, let's see what the, the reaction from this guy is um, to Seth's proposition first Persuasion. Cool. Uh, double Come 13. On, 19. Nice. Hmm. He has, uh, has a moment of, uh, of, of contemplation looking about from the prisoners to you, back to the prisoners. Looks down at his... Uh, you, you see he pulls out this bronze ceremonial blade, a dagger, which he holds in his hand and he's, he's having a... Right, yeah, very long stare at it as he thinks of thinks of all of his options. Mm. Uh, as he's as he's weighing up, Bruch, now is the moment when Brucon will yeah. uh, jump in and says, uh, "Another thought occurs. Um, you, your concern is is not uh, staging an, uh, an invasion of Burakrin, uh, thus uh, uh, leading to a causes belli, uh, and your king wants to uh, interview Neris." Uh, to find out more about her whole background with Ushtag the Deceiver and so on. Uh, am, am I am I on track so far? You are correct, yes. And we are right now, I believe you said, I remember you saying before, stood in Rachir, correct? Yes. So, <coughs> what if we what if we uh, agree to meet here with your king? If the audience could, it takes place here, rather than the, the, the big concern we have, you see, is um, going deep into hostile territory, but a neutral, a semi-neutral negotiating space that isn't uh, that doesn't pose the risk of a of a war, such as the one we're stood in right now. Wouldn't that uh, wouldn't that work as well? I'm afraid the king has uh, no intention of leaving her there, for there is uh, much risk to him being assassinated as the last of his line just like his mother and his family in entirely were his wife his son the heir all can i insight can i insight check that i mean he's oh, in wait, his own no, truth he's in his own <laughs> truth yeah right, right, i forgot only spoken about it eight or nine times in this exchange uh, how how was i possibly to yeah, yeah no no don't right. worry about it it's a perfectly um, valid uh, legitimate to uh, ask in sorry, any other situation decades of muscle memory kicking in um brucon goes mm, okay well uh, that's fair uh, does he have a uh, a trusted emissary who might be at less less risk he could um, send surely he's got a major domo or something like that they've all got you know grand viziers with big shiny hats and all of this jazz. as far as uh, spawn of ushtag is concerned it needs to be taken up with the king himself he has ultimate control and power in richia that being said however your Elvish companion here has made a fair assessment of the situation. So, uh -huh. so here is what we propose. As you say, you can take your prisoners with you, they'll return to their families and thwart a war. But since Mr. Master Dwarf here has been happy to stay with us, we would press this... Uh, this notion that he stay with us until you return with the elf for spawn of Ushtag is much more important than 
even a war with Burekrin. If Ushtag were to return, the entirety of the many lands could fall once again. Can I ask, what do you think that she is? You say spawn of Ushtag. What do you think will happen? We do not know exactly what, uh, what may happen, but we know that those who follow Ushtag wish to bring him back from the dead. And those who display powers connected to Ushtag normally share some kind of lineage with them and could be used in such a way to bring him back. Have you ever heard of the Red Mages or the Finger Weapon? The, the da yes. Finger Daggers? Bone Daggers? The Red Mages, yes. We have heard of them, sure. In fact, there was members of Clan Ushbek who are now no longer part of Rachir were members of such an order. They, like uh, the Red Mages, wanted to bring Ushtag back. Uh, sorry, Jack, just to cut in, uh, roughly speaking, how are we doing on, on the time on this uh, hour we were given for negotiation? Uh, you've, I'd say you've used about half the time at this point. You haven't yeah. had that long having a conversation, so I think you're, you, you're good for a little more. Half, Neris half is half getting, half. getting miles away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's um, making a good fist of it. Go ahead. Rukon kind of um, turns to the others and goes, I mean, I, uh, the terms are acceptable to me and, and you know, it, it would maybe be useful to learn more about what these uh, these fellows know about uh, about our old friend Damon and, and his uh, nefarious plans. Um, so I, I, I just wonder if, if time's wasted if we want to get, uh, get get the prisoner train moving back back home or if we want to stay and, uh, and ch chat to gather intel. Let's get um, these prisoners Back home, good idea. Brina, Brina can't leave yet. Brina has something to do still. That's, yeah, that's a good point. Oh. Thank oh, you, why? Mr. Dragonborn, for hearing us out and allowing a good compromise. Yeah, Brinkon turns back to him and, and nods uh, and, and says, we, we, We've still got a few small details to. Um, sort out my uh, companion here, he gestures to Brina, uh, is, is, I think, quite interested in the tree, if I'm, uh, if I'm right. Um, so, uh, you know, don't mind us while we're getting on with uh, that, but uh, speaking for myself, your terms are acceptable, and he spits in his hand and holds it out, and because he's a dwarf, he holds it out like this. <laughs> and for the first time in this entire exchange, the uh, Dragonborn laughs audibly, heartily, like his head rolls back as, as he does so. Ha 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 ha! I like this dwarf. <laughs> and returns in kind. You've got about to discover some interesting things about Dragonborn physiology like acid spit or something. Uh, fortunately, no. This is not a breath weapon Hooray! that he's using at this point. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. The one will shake and Brucon turns back and goes, right, let's... Uh, so, Bruno, you've got something you want to sort out and then I guess the rest of us... Uh, I don't know if people want to have a have a rest or something or, or what. Let's. Um, What's let, slightly let, let's... distracting to the rest of you as Brucon turns and says this is that most of his hairs are now standing on end. <laughs> what color is this no. dragonborn, by the way? He had a few blue scales. Right. Uh, uh, and the rest of them. Oh. Uh, so they're mostly kind scales. of that clay-like uh, oh, variants right, yeah, yeah, of yeah, brown, yeah. orange. Uh, kind of uh, uh, scales for the most part, with only a few of certain colours. Gotcha. Oh yeah, Brucon's got all 1.21 gigawatts, Marty. Brilliant. <laughs> little bit. You don't like. It's, it hasn't been harmful, but it's just suddenly you're like yeah, yeah. taking a look and static electricity just all over the shop. Is, is the man bun intact? Yes, yes. It's still tied in place. Oh. It's just a bit frayed in places around the yeah. edges, but it's still <laughs> yeah. there. Still there. Just trying to unravel. Grand. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. Um, uh, anyone else got things like we could maybe take a short rest or something? Brina needs to do her jazz, yeah. whatever else we need to do. Brucon's main interest, I mean, Brucon's staying here for the time being at least. Um, and his main interest is having a, a, a good chat with Master Talon at the next available opportunity. But uh, other than that, whatever else we need doing. Um, how high up short. was that tree? Uh, it's approximately 30 feet in the air, so the base of the kind of this whole chunk of earth that's 
levitating inexplicably in the center of uh, of this place uh, is probably probably the very bottom of the the earth like bit is maybe 20 feet up but if you can imagine that so yeah it's a bit of a way and there's so, a lake below it right yeah so um uh, Brina is going to turn to Malar first. Um, Malar? So, um, Keith sent me on this um, mission towards the tree. Um, I, I know we've talked about how, how Keith speaks to me directly. And if, if there's a way for you to get up there as well, I could just probably fly up with Narakokra, but if you know of a way to get up there, Maybe you'd hear Keith too, and I thought you might like that. Oh, well, I, uh, deeply touched by the uh, gesture, um, miss, uh, I, uh, uh, do not have such appellations. Maybe if my ears were big enough, one day I would be able to fly, but that is not <laughs> the case right now. Um, I, uh, no, I have faith. I know the gods are there. I have spoken to Fester himself, and some people don't even get that in That will do me for now. I am dare say if, if Omanak wishes to reach out and make contact in a personal manner, he will, uh, oh, uh, he'll find a way. But thank you, miss. If I can be of any assistance to your endeavors, I will, uh, of course, uh, render aid. Thank you. Just figured I'd offer. And then she'll, um, turn around and, uh, go to, uh, the master and, um, and ask her, um, could you ask her to get me up to the tree? I'd like to fly with him one last time. Certainly, of course. Um, I'm glad to see the, uh, think the, uh, hostilities have ceased and that you have made a agreeable arrangement with these dragonborn. Uh, yeah, me too. Her, Would have her. been bad. Uh, Brina wishes you to fly her one last time. And you see Kerr now looks up from... Uh, he seems to have been talking to some Aarakocra. You notice um, a couple of uh, child-like uh, Aarakocra, but, you know, no taller than yourself, Brina, um, that he's been uh, talking to as well. And he kind of stoops down and gives them a big hug for uh, coming back coming back to you. And he looks quite, I mean, you've got to know Kerr pretty well over this time. Um, so his more subtle facial expressions, which Aarakocra unfortunately have due to their bird-like appearance, uh, you can pick up on a lot more. And he does seem pleased to, uh, it's bittersweet almost that, that he's uh, coming back over to uh, fly with you again. And uh, he puts the uh, he puts the harness back on, uh, the papoose, ready for you. Yeah. Um, before she climbs in, she'll give him a hug. And a uh, big the, the smile. Says, and the Brina at all costs. She is too <laughs> adorable to die. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the master, uh, the master, kind of leans over and says, "He is pleased to be to be to be flying for you again." Thank you, Kerr. I appreciate it. And he starts starts pointing around, like gesticulating as to where you want to go. And I'll point at, right at the tree. Ah. He looks at the master to like ninety degree turn of the head. The master, yes, Kerr, that is where she needs to go. Ah. Oh, mm. seems you, a little you bit know concerned. About that? We all know of this tree. It's quite obviously here. It defies gravity oh. and logic. I mean, you knew that I'm supposed to go there? You have said it, have you not? Oh, I thought Keith maybe had spoken to you. Okay. <laughs> I do not know of this Keith that you speak, but I know this place oh. is important. Uh, um, you, you might know him as Almanac. I just know him as Keith. Interesting. As you were. Right. Can I inside check? <laughs> sure. You can inside check her, sure. What is my plus three? Okay. Uh, nope. Ten. Not the natural twenty on deception. No, you are not going to know that. <laughs> it's nope, hard so... to read her features, especially because it's a disembodied voice speaking to you. 
Um, yeah, yeah, and she has seems an odd on comment her though. It does. Yep, that's true. Um, but she wants to get to the tree, so she'll just kind of dismiss that quickly and climb in. Hesitantly, um, Kerr starts flapping his wings and leads you over to uh, to uh, up onto this uh, this little floating island. So standing there, very tall, very thin, with its uh, interesting pink leaves, is the tree. And you can see now uh, as you land that it appears to have been maintained in some fashion because at least one of the branches appears to have been cut away and there's just left the the you know the, the rings uh the exposed uh <laughs> uh bark of the tree um sorry not bark the anyway in, exposed a uh, nubbin i guess uh, on the tree um which seems a bit unusual considering Does it happen to be the size of my wand you going to get out your wand and check it out yeah all right pull out your wand uh make oh. a uh, investigation check yep that should be good uh 16 on the die and it's plus eight so uh 24. i mean even from this distance being uh in the papoose it it looks like a good fit for your uh for your wand although something about it says your wand is slightly thinner but there's an uncanny resemblance there, especially looking at some of the other branches in this tree that seem to have that twisted, gnarled appearance in the same way as your wand does. Okay. I'll just, um, I'll hold my wand in front of me and I'll say, Keith, I'm here. Um, I don't know why you wanted me to come, but I'm here. And I'll try to kind of hold that wand against that area um, that nubbin in the tree and see if I can yeah see if, you, see if you can kind of fit it into the tree fit it in mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's interesting as you first start moving your wand there it's uh, <laughs> you feel ridiculous doing this you can barely reach the branch uh, and you know this, this isn't going to mean anything and then suddenly almost like two magnets it just locks into place on the uh on the tree the rest of you um who are watching this happening now see the trees start to glow these pink leaves become intensely bright um it seems like there is an aura of energy about the place in fact the wind starts picking up again just like how it had done when the uh, aracocra had been cheering uh, chanting only this time none of them are doing any chanting they're standing there agape uh, looking at uh, at this scene in front of them it's the energy seems to pick up the wind picks up faster and faster and faster and faster Brina you're barely hanging on like to the ground at this point and onto the branch as the it's this intense yeah. energy picks up and then I'm holding on and I'm giggling <laughs> yeah like, having a great time you see yep. <laughs> this light that comes out of the tree becomes so bright that actually at, at first, Brina, you're completely blinded. The rest of you can just see that entire island is now just one big light. You can't actually see, Brina, the island, anything on it, just this huge light in the centre. And Brina, um, squinting, because, you know, with your uh, subterranean uh, existence, this is particularly hard for you to see through, but you squint your eyes and, and you feel the wand suddenly start to grow. And then, as this is all happening, um, you swear you can make out around you in this, uh, in your view line, wherever you look, it seems to be the same view, and it seems to be a, a silhouetted uh, outline, a bit behind, you know, greyer in amongst all this white light, of eight individuals, one of which seems to have antlers on its head, one seems to be fully plated in armour, uh, another seems to, uh, you seem to recognise actually as Keith. Um, by his casual stance uh, and untidy hair. You also see a, another shorter, plump one, which you gather possibly is Festier from what you've read. And another two that you don't seem to... Re uh, the, again, you don't recognise this. One of them seems to keep fading in and out of being, not entirely sure if they're there or not. None of them seem to speak until one with the untidy hair steps forward and says see I told you she'd do it I told you one of them would do it 
I told I you, this is important. Hi. This is important. Like, uh, th she's obviously one of the ones we need for what's going to come. And you, you can't tell who's who. You don't know what the other gods sound like. But you do hear one, sounds female, saying, um, saying, this doesn't prove anything. Like, yes, you're god of truth, but you've been wrong before. We don't know what is to come yet. And he's saying, look, look, but, but Declan said, didn't you, Declan? And one in the cow just nods. See? It's going to happen. She's going to need to be ready. They all are. Um, ready for what? Oh, I can't tell you that. It's not how this works. Oh, how does it work? And he kind of looks back to the rest of them. Can I not? You know the rules. You'll change the future if you tell her what it's going to be. Ugh. Fine. And then suddenly the light drops. They've gone. And you're back, Brina, on the island. And you're holding... Well, what was your wand? It's now a quarterstaff. Okay. It radiates uh, the magic still from it. Um... But yes, it seems you have upgraded your uh, irrefutable. In fact, if you spent, you need to spend some time with it to understand exactly how this works. You've just now received it, but uh, I will, I will send you some more information. I have, I have some. I'll add it. I'll add it to the entry on uh, for the item on D and D Beyond. Won't do it right now unless you uh, unless you want to do more stuff with the item. But as I said, you've got to take some time with it anyway. Yeah. No. Um... Rina is strangely calm. Um, she's usually, you know, bouncing all over the place. But they're not there anymore. She's going to speak anyway. Um, you know, y you got me this far. And I've been okay. Whatever's next, I'm sure we'll be ready. Don't worry. And thanks for this. As you go to hold it up, it doesn't move. Yep. You can't. You can't move it. It's stuck in place. Oh. Oh. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Oh, I didn't tell you about that, did I? You hear the voice of Keith in your head. Oh, no. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so this, uh, yeah, this is great. This is really cool, uh, right? Your irrefutable is yours, right? So all you need to do is will it to move, and it will move. Oh, okay, move. And then suddenly, yeah, it becomes under your control again, <laughs> and you can move it freely like any quarter staff. Okay. You can also Does make it, it stop moving light? whenever you want as well. Does it have the same color glow? Uh, does it have the same what? Color glow. Uh, yes. Yep. Same as same as before. Same since it was changed by uh, Keith after by uh, after fleeting uh, complained. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Wouldn't want it any other way. Um, right. Would it be fair to say that every now and again this rod-like shape becomes somewhat immovable? It would seem. <laughs> yes. It would seem that this rod can can become immovable at times if it is willed to be so. Just make sure you're touching it, though, all right? Okay, thank you. Anything else I need to know before I go down? No, not before you, not before you go down, no. After? Uh, maybe. We'll, ch <laughs> we'll chat about it later. Cool. Thank you, Key. Toodles! <laughs> right, I'll turn back and uh, get back to Kerr. How's he been in all this? Kurt is like, I mean, his uh, the bottom half of his beak is much further away from the top half than it used to be. He is <laughs> gawping. <laughs> gawping for days. He's he's when you step forward towards him, he almost he takes a step back at first and then has to kind of regain his senses. It, it's just me, Kurt. <laughs> points at the staff. Yeah, and I'll shrug. 
not. Yeah. He just he just crouches down, ready to receive you in the papoose. Yep, and I'll get in and go down. And yeah, brings you back to earth. Uh, undoes the papoose and holds it over as if to give it to you. Um. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, are we anywhere near um, the master now? Yep, she's down there with you too, not far away. Cool. I'll just move towards her and, and ask her to translate for me. Um. Ka? Bef Ka. Before, before I met you, um, I had a pretty bad um, impression of Aarakocras. And. Bef yeah. <laughs> and you, you changed that. You'll, you've kept me safe, and I'm very grateful, and I hope I can return the favor one day. He just, uh, wordlessly, he, uh, he just squats down to your level, and looks you directly in the eyes, and says, Welcome! I'll give him another hug. <laughs> That's a little hug. Yeah. Go to your babies. I know you miss them. And he gives you a little pat on the head as he as he goes to leave, and then uh, goes over to the, to his uh, the rest of his family. Perfect. And I'll go back to my friends as well. Thank you, Master. That was that was important, and I'm grateful. He is, I'm sure he is glad he could be of service, as we all are. Nobody has ever done that with that tree before. I mean, I didn't really do anything. I just went where I was told. Sometimes we achieve a lot when we're just being told what to do. It looks that way. <laughs> I don't think my work is quite done yet, so I'll go do what I'm told again. It is important to think for yourself sometimes, too, but I know that you will when you need to. I do. Thank you. Thank I'll you. Head back to my friends. Okay, so you head back to the rest of your party who are barely holding together after the emotional scene that. that <laughs> I'm barely holding on. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, the rest of you. Brina now has a staff. Uh, that seems to have a very faint bl light blue glow most of, well, all the time, in fact. Hi, guys. Hi, that was weird. Yeah, it was. Pretty cool, though. What did yeah. you have a new, I see you have a new doohickey. What, what's it do, Higgy? I haven't figured that out yet, but he said I will, um, so I'll just have to sit with it a bit. He said hi, by the way, and oh, also that we needed to be prepared for what was coming. Something. Yeah, that, that would be a nice change of pace, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, something's coming, something big, and all. I saw all the eight. I think I don't know them, but I think that's what they were. Um, and they seem to be kind of arguing over what needs to happen next, but. Keith, at least, and um, someone called Declan, that's what he said. Um, they seem to think that we are important for that, so there's that. Cool. Oh, um, De Declan, you say? Yeah. Malar, Leo's Ooh. been watching Malar this entire time, just like. <laughs> God things? <laughs> Waiting for oh, reaction. Shit. Declan, uh, that could be an ill omen. It could be a benefit. I, oh, I, uh, I will need to think about such things. I don't suppose you know, uh, hmm, what the <coughs> impending event is by any chance? Well, I think Keith wanted to tell me, but the others told him that he can't because that would change the future. Oh. So, 
I don't know. But he gave me this, apparently, to prepare me. So, I mean, they're guiding us, at least. There's some comfort in that, right? Well, Did they have any other right. stuff for the rest of us? <laughs> 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 like well, gold. <laughs> I like to imagine that that was preceded by the, the immortal Armageddon quote, not to be the uh, materialistic weasel of the group, but are we going to pay? <laughs> yeah. But also say, hey, the, last the... time someone spoke to those gods, they gave Malar a necklace. This time, Brina mm. gets this. When are they going to when are they going to start sharing the love? I mean, maybe you got, you, you got your own. You got your own sugar daddy now. Fuck you don't up, know that. Up, man. And no, just just to be Brina clear, does that. the O-ring, go ahead. <laughs> Just to be clear about that last sentence you said, the the eight are responsible for everything we've been through so far, is what you're saying. Uh, well, I, maybe, but... In I interesting know. set of gods? Interesting set of gods. <laughs> Mr. Leobrin, the, it, <laughs> is, it is... Do not try to intuit their will. It is uh, a rich tapestry of which uh, we cannot perceive the entire weave of, of such things. I think that's Loxodon for a waste of time. Are uh, these the same god that, like, two weeks ago killed us by a nice giant? Well, now, that was more or less a dream, Mr. Surf. <laughs> I remember getting squished. <laughs> it hurt, and, uh, Mala. And yet... And here you are again <laughs> to live and tell the tale. So, uh, you know, uh, everything's they're, awash. They're the ones who took us to the werewolf party. The uh, the ones who took us down into a cave where Neris. Um... So, yes. So, what is, so we've we've concluded that the big bad evil guy of this campaign, our, our overall strategic <clears throat> goal is to kill God. Attack cool. and dethrone God, yeah. Attack and dethrone God, yeah. We'd already, yeah, it, it's literally. We're Marxists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's most fun God. having one God as the big bad. You have to have eight so you can progressively defeat them, and everyone yeah. gets something from each one, faces their own challenges. Uh, yeah. Right. I mean, so you do have played God of War. I was going to say that this, this definitely isn't the first uh, D and D campaign where you have to end up fighting a god, right? I, that's not how the realms of possibility. It's definitely not that unusual, even. Malar's the inside guy for the god. The mole, the elephant mole. There's always one, um, isn't there? Indeed. Uh, yeah, cool. Awesome. So with your uh, conversation all wrapped up. Um, Brucon, you wanted to stay, didn't you? Um, and talk to Master Talon while well, the rest of you wanted to head on out. Uh, the Dragonborn aren't stopping you from doing that this time, so uh, you are free to leave when you when you choose to, unless you have anything further to discuss. Nope, just want to catch up to Jackpin. Question him about the finger and if he gave it up to the Druid Lady. Well, f handily enough, as the, the prisoners have been, you know, led to the entrance... But as you guys start heading your way there, you can see they all look like lost sheep. They don't want to move beyond the gate because they don't really know where they're going. Um, let's before we uh, before we we have that conversation. Let's just uh, jump on back over to find out how far Neris has got because she's she's been making some headway at this time. Neris, so um, so what was your plan as uh, once you left the uh, the Eyrie? Where were you headed? So I figured I'd go back to Hilberg. Yep. And just go there, check in on the uncle, stock up, rest, and then go back because go go to the the, the snack place because uh you know yep. spells fight so, yeah yeah resources. So, so the uh, I guess the you'll probably go back the way you came. Uh, yeah. For the most part, so back down the the mountainside, and then obviously meet up with your with Laos, your horse, which is being Yay! kept in the kept in the cave with uh, uh, where fleeting and oh uh, yes, I, I gotta go check that out. I completely forgot, so I went. I, I'll go to to Laos and go check out, mm. you know, check on fleeting. So one thing. That, so first things first, uh, you need to make an athletics check as you are descending the mountain. <gasps> <laughs> 13 on the dice so I see if I have any I should have something a modifier 
Uh, Sorry, yeah, I'm strength. so bad at, at this. Uh, oh, if it's strength, then zero. <laughs> 13. So just a, a solid 13. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, oh, uh, I should... Uh, I mean, first of all, uh, chat, I've got to say, uh, let's say uh, here, a big thank you to uh, Skulder9 and Butterfly. Thank you both for following during today's uh, stream so Ooh. far. Yay. 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 Followers. Yay. Yay. Follow, follow, follow. Yay. <laughs> anyway, with Candy the third... Mountain. With Candy Mountain. With the, with the 13, <coughs> you, uh, uh, you do make some progress descending the mountain. It is a bit tough going. You... There's a couple of times you have a couple of near misses, like slipping and then catching yourself, uh, descending down the, the ropes that have been put in place. Um, so you are kind of slowed down. So by, so with I would say within an hour, you'll and by the time the invisibility wears off, you'll be probably just about at the foot of the mountain. Um, okay. And so yeah, you can continue on to uh, to your to your horse and of course uh, fleeting and what's going on there. Yes. Excellent. I also. Because I don't want to be seen, really, traveling. Yeah. Um, I imagine, like, hmm, probably want to travel either just off the road or what's the, what time of day is it? Uh, right. You know? So, so it's about um, it's getting to like five p.m. now. So it's okay. the sun is starting to set. Um, obviously, you're in the in the middle so, of autumn. Do I? So I, I want to see. Once I get to Laos and Fleeting, mm. what's up? So uh, what's going on? So interestingly, <laughs> when you get to the cave, you find that Laos and the Diakapabaya are no longer tied up like they were before. They're kind of roaming around the entrance to the cave. Um, don't seem too bothered. They uh, Laos recognizes you and comes over and kind of bends his neck over your I shoulder. Prepared. Yeah, pleased to Boop see you. Boops the snoot. Boops the snoot. He kind of yeah rubs himself up against you a little <laughs> bit. I mean, he he at first swings his head around a bit too hard, and it almost like knocks you know knocks you for six. But you, uh, uh But then yeah, kind of regains composure from him uh, for himself. Um, looking inside the cave, you can see uh, you can see fleeting there, hanging upside down. Fleeting, are you awake? I am now, yes. Yay! We thought you were dead. But what's going on? What? I, I was dead. Only temporarily. Okay, can relate. Um, are you? Uh, something is weird about you. Yes, what have you been thinking my, about? Uh, my hammer is gone. <laughs> did, did Seth take that? I can't remember. Uh, no, he didn't. What? Your hammer is... Took your hammer and... What? Just what? I tried summoning it back, but it, it didn't come back. Well, damn. I know. Ah. Uh... Right, so we're in... We're, we're kind of in a situation here, and I kind of need to not hang out here for that long. Do you want to come back to town, or do you want to... The rest of the party's probably going to come by later. Oh, is Seth coming? Uh, probably. I should probably wait for Seth. Excellent. Um, yeah, so what have you been thinking about, like, here you've been here for a while like any other group names anything like that no no um i was in a tavern with keith uh, we were having a chat you know speaking about life and the universe and everything and how um there are multiple champions of keith and i am but one of those champions um and uh well, he basically told me I had the option. I could leave and go with him, or I could come back to where you guys are. Um, and I thought about it for a long time. But then, of course, I, I see. am back. Okay. 
Well, uh, are you feeling okay? Are you... Yes. Well, uh, okay. a little bit... A little bit dead, but not completely dead. Okay, well, uh... Not undead, just, you know... Ill. Yeah, okay. Um, well, you rest up a little bit more. And I'm sure the rest of the party is going to be by shortly. I, I, I'm, I have to go. <laughs> you're, you're going to, so you're going to Hilberg. Uh, I maybe I'm not sure yet. It's a whole thing. I'll, uh, the other guys will explain, but I, I, I need to take the horse and I just kind of need to not be here. Okay. Definitely not the doppelganger then. No. Well, that's a relief. Yeah. Um. Right. Uh. Good to have you back. Good, good to be back. Um. Take bye? care. <laughs> please, please don't, don't die again. Okay. Take care of yourself. I'll try. Uh, also, don't die yourself. I'll I'll try that too. Yeah. I'll I'll look after everyone else, but. You've got to look after you. I will. Okay. And the horse. Um. Absolutely. Uh. Okay. Bye. Uh, please. Bye. I just want to point out, and this is in no way a criticism. That was amazing, but I, I just love that that was a completely in character interaction for Fleeting, and his charisma <laughs> is like nineteen. <laughs> He's the most amazing bamboozling character I think I've ever covered. It's, it's so I, I agree. I agree. He. <laughs> Uh, Dan, Neris doesn't back. trust Love. him. <laughs> that was very good from both. Neris of doesn't trust him. She doesn't trust that this is it's very hard to trust a man who's dangling of... upside down, having a, having a very deadpan conversation. Yes, having been in a coma when we left him, and then now is just okay. Fine, just talk to God. It's all cool. Yeah, that's entirely so... reasonable. <laughs> so, yeah. so you're going to so get she... on Laos and start uh, making your way back. I'm just like very confused, just like. Yeah. You wish there was somebody there apart from Laos that you could go to. Yeah, it's just yeah. like... Right, and so I'm gonna, yeah, start making my way back. But staying just off the roads. On sounds Laos, good. Sounds, sounds good. On Laos, yeah. yeah. Gotta be on Laos. And if you take that die capybara, you ain't going anywhere. Yeah, it's not my pony to take. Okay, I got so my pony. So Neris is charting a course. <laughs> She's heading on her way. As for the rest of you... As you exit the uh, exit the entrance, uh, the Eerie, and you see all the uh, were once prisoners there, including uh, Belle Quigley, who immediately, in her uh, very tailored fit uh, uh, leather garments, runs up uh, runs up to Seth. Seth gives you a big old hug. A um, little bit awkward, given she's half your height, but she doesn't care. She just wraps her hands around your legs. And says, "Oh, oh, Seth! I knew you would save me. It's so yes, good to uh, see you." We're... Yes, we're glad. Glad you're all safe. Your your brother sent us to find you. Oh, oh! I knew Bantam would not let me down. And here, of course, I would not. Uh, and then, springing out of existence from apparently <laughs> nowhere, is uh, Bantam Quigley, uh, who appears to have been lurking around the entrance. This, I was the mastermind behind this the old time to free you from these manticores. And she immediately goes over to Bantam. Oh, Bantam, it is so good to see you all. And uh, moi, moi. You know, very continental. Um, <clears throat> and for a moment completely forgets the rest of you are there uh, before turning back. And uh, Bantam then stats, stands, uh, steps forward to the rest of you to, so uh, what is the state of play? We're going to go to, and I'm going to start the map that we've got from the Moonrunners that has the location of the meetup point to meet cool. up with the carriages. So we're going to go here, get the carriages, head back to Hilberg. Oh, excellent. Uh, right, well, uh, if you're okay with this rubble, uh, I can, of course, uh, escort you uh, back to this place as well. And uh, on rubble, you hear... <clears throat> 
Uh, rabble, you say? I have you know, I'm Jackman Winklebottom, proprietor of the once flaming Jack Spar and Grill. So, oh, he looked tortured. What? <laughs> I, feel bad that I, I feel bad that I asked that question the same time as Brucon did that, because it's not the intention I'm now going for. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> no, no. To be fair, Brucon is still I... is not going to be he's at the entrance with you, but obviously he has agreed not to leave. Oh yeah, no. I asked if I asked if he looked tortured and then Brucon went, Oh just blast him. I didn't mean I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to know if he'd been tortured and had given up the dagger. Okay, are you gonna ask him that? Or are you just checking him out? Yeah, does he look it, and then I'm, and then I'm gonna check. He doesn't look beaten up. No, he. I mean, he. He certainly looks a little dishevelled. His suit is, is most certainly creased, and his hair is well needs a good comb. But he doesn't look injured, particularly. I swear to, I swear to God, if he gave it up because they like noogied his head or something and messed his hair up, I'm gonna be pissed. I but mean, Jacken, did check with did, you? Oh, sorry. What did was you that? Give up the dagger. Sorry, uh, I've got that question. I will answer that question. Sorry, Angelique, you said something. Oh, I was... Uh, Brina is just saying this. If I, like, I could help with the questioning. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, do it, do it. I didn't want to be rude and ask you to do it like twice in a row. I didn't want to use you as a human t- truth detector. <laughs> I thought all eight gods may instantly get pissed with me because apparently you're tight with them. I am, so you better be nice. Oh, uh, I can feel the Malar jealousy from here. <laughs> <laughs> Give my life to the ape for what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Uh, so yeah, you asked the question to, to Jack Burn and you're doing Zone of Truth at the same time. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at Jack and say, "Sorry about this," and cast. Okay. Well, he fails. He fails. Um, <laughs> His, but he does protest. Magic? You don't trust what I say? You don't think I'm a man of my word? And then he, yeah, did fails. Did you tell them? <laughs> no, I did not tell them a thing. But they found me and they uh-huh. took me here and then they were going to question me when suddenly a massive dragon appeared. Jack, where is the dagger? Oh, it's still safe in the hidey place, which I cannot tell you for safety reasons. Tell me where the hiding place is. No! I die! To... <laughs> it's not just zone of truth. You have to tell. <laughs> I'm not supposed to tell you, but basically it's 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 in a it's it's under some foothills which Greenblade found and he showed me to it and I don't know what it's called and oh why did I say that? Why are you trying so hard to protect the dagger? I... I don't know exactly how powerful it is, but I know that it is powerful and that bad people seek it. The ones who burned down my pub. Yeah. You should give a dagger to us so we can protect it from them, because I, otherwise they'll I, I keep don't trying have to it. kidnap you. I don't have it. Greenblade, he will have it, probably. It's still in the hiding place, last I knew. Where's Greenblade? It, I think he's in the hiding place. That was the last I saw him. Oh my god. He visits Hilberg a lot, though. He's got a lover there, you see. I, I think he got her pregnant, but he doesn't want anyone knowing that. Oh, no. He's like looking around at these people, some the of which are from Hilberg. Um. Yep. Yeah. yeah, he got the bartender, yeah. Y- yes, the, bar- the bartender, the yes. I believe that's the one, yes. Can't remember her name, okay. but yes. Lovely hair. Lovely lady. Very charming. Husband's got a bit of a strange accent. Yes. Slander. That was it. Slander. That's her husband. Oh, God. Why am I still talking? I regret casting this one. <laughs> just word vomit. It just, just keeps on throwing stuff out. Okay, Jack. You, you did good. You don't need to worry about the, the dagger anymore. We'll take care of it. No, I just need to find somewhere else to live. But, uh, well, if you're going to Hilberg, I suppose I could probably find a place there. No! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Go back to the last end of nowhere and build your fucking pub. No. Maybe he could turn <laughs> your house into a pub. And so while we're not there, he can manage a pub in the house. And if we ever come to Hilberg, we have a pub house. 
If Perfect. you are saying this out loud, that's a great idea, by the way. It's a fantastic yeah. idea. Brucon, Brucon, from like the other side of the chamber, you hear Brucon shout, <laughs> Love it! Yes! <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. You, you just hear it from the other side of the mountain. Yes! <laughs> Ooh, a new place of purveyance, you say? Well, that could be a sound and lucrative investment indeed. Yes, this would be most interesting. Okay, you've saw. In fact, I remember that Hilberg has an old brewery there, and I don't think it's been used for quite some time, but maybe we can get that going again as well. And oh, the possibilities! Of course, make sure nobody tells about the fact that I told you about the pregnant lady in Greenblade, and that everything should be fine. Nah, we already knew that. But uh, for the pub, for the brewery bit, I think a cult works there right now, so just put that on hold. Oh. Oh. Oh dear. Well, anyway, if you've got a pub, I'll, there's already a pub there. They must get their drinks from somewhere, so I'm sure something can be arranged. Well, let's go to Hillback. Yes, uh, let's walk go. Away as quickly from him as possible. Uh, uh, shall we follow you, Master Seth? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Joins in the line, of the conga line of people. And you're going to start escorting your prisoners. Unless yeah. you have anything else you wanted to go through? No? Cool. Um, so no. Uh, so now the the only tricky bit for you guys is descending the mountain with these uh, with these guys because some of them <coughs> don't look particularly uh, able for adventuring and uh, clambering over, or for traversing mountains. They don't look like the ideal candidates. Uh, no, so, like uh, yeah, kind of like Brina in that, in that regard um, is one of those. Um, you do still have some Aarakocra with the, uh, around you, though. It, you could ask them to, to bring them along if you wanted to. That probably would be some help. Oh, yes. Let's go there. Before we leave... Um, yes. Uh, Leo would like to get uh, Brucon's signature in a book. Yes. Oh, now, <laughs> that's a very good point, because I said I was going to do the, the introduction with that, and I didn't. Uh, before, so fair enough. Um, yeah, that's a very sound thing to do. So, as you open, as you've been, these guys have been having that discussion, Leo, you noticed, um, brought out your tome, as you do sometimes to write in, and you, uh, you see, uh, it's uh, like a, a puff of, uh, pink and purple, um, uh, uh petals, uh, erupt from the center of the book. And as you turn to open it, uh, you see scrawling in front of your very eyes, very uh, flowing, neat handwriting in, in this same pinkish purple ink with a, a very magical sheen to it. Yes, it's just like the colour of that dice, lovely. Appearing uh, in the book. And it says, There is a way to keep in touch, and to do so doesn't need much. Just ask your friend to leave their sign and you will be able to speak with them for a time. <laughs> and the first name that appears and appearing in the book is the name uh, of uh, of your patron, Eranthi First Blooming, appears in the book. Handy. Handy, I handy, handy. Me. Although now I only have two slots of names. <laughs> oh, but you, I believe you can you can remove names if you want to, right? Yeah. But I feel like removing my patron's <laughs> yeah, name. Yeah, patron from might book. be a bit of a snub. Bad no, move. I, I would no. I think for the uh, out right for the, for the purposes of the, uh, for the purposes of this, um, she doesn't count as one of your three names because she's your patron. So that's just okay. a given. Yeah, I think that's fair. You can have. That <laughs> it's like, mm, dumb mm. you, <laughs> baby mama. Can't really cut off the baby mama. That might be uh, a bad move. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yes, I would like, um, uh, Mr. 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 Ree, um, should we need to get in touch? I uh, I have a new little facility that might be handy. If you could just pop your signature down here, so we have your consent, um, we should be able to keep in touch on a pretty much unlimited level. Wow. Brucon pauses for a moment as he flicks in his brain through all of the times it would have been really really handy in his life to be able to 
to have contact with someone wherever and whenever under any circumstances. And then he kind of zones back in the room and, and goes, oh, brilliant, yeah, I, I, I pass it over. Uh, and then he, he, he pulls out a, a, a quill pen, um, produces some ink or something, dips it, goes to write, and then pauses and goes, this is magic stuff, isn't it? It's, it's definitely magic stuff. So you say my signature? Yes. Your, your name. You write your name. Right. Ah. Brucon um, is kind of like, he's there <laughs> staring at the page for a surprisingly long amount of time. And you goes, see the, what, what was the, the rhyme and Lady Aranth first bloom, and you see that written on there um, while you're staring the, at it. Your, your name? Um, let's, who let's who you identify your who you identify as is this do you, okay. do you not know who you are um who i identify myself as okay i'll tell you what i'm going to write something down maybe let's have a little we, we might need a test run um <clears throat> and brucon writes uh <laughs> brucon re in the um in the book yes okay uh cool uh well if we want to test it um in that case uh I will say that uh, it, it is does rely on me first messaging you and then you can respond. It's not all the time. Uh, okay. I just uh, Leo would be like, uh, um, "Hey, you up?" Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> so if this works, Brucon should hear "Hey, you up?" inside his head. You indeed hear in Leobrin's voice, "Hey, you up?" Um, Brucon <clears throat> Bruc uh, thinks in his mind, um, all lowercase, uh, random um, punctuation and grammar. Um, uh, yeah, hey baby, what's up? <laughs> uh, and then the, those words appear on the page. Uh, and then we'll fade away after one minute. Uh, it, oh, yeah, it works. Better. Look, there we go. Oh wow! Uh, it, 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 it even erases your conversation history. This is uh, yeah. this is momentous. This is a life changing. I mean, the book only like has a limited Snapchat storage Snapchat capacity, TV. so. Snapchat it. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Brookon holds down the uh, thing. Waiting for um, the send. <laughs> I think I think Brucon just slid into your DMs there, Leo Brin. <laughs> I think I think we I, I think it's very very unambiguous who just did the sliding. In, in this well, episode. yes, quite. Can I can I have your can I can I get your details? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, sweet. Okay, that works. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, basically, the same same standard rules as sending, except I can do it all the time, um, and it is what I write is what you hear, what you say is what I see written it's very cool it's very cool <laughs> very much for our time <laughs> indeed wall of nonsense love it must, must change your pace from the road nonsense um, or indeed the monk nonsense yeah this is going to be very handy while you're apart so it's a good 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 time to do it All right. so um so what i'll do then um Right, so we'll continue with the rest of the party for now, and then when that's taken care of, we'll have a bit with Brucon and uh, and Master Talon before we end today's session. I think that's probably a good way to split it, if everyone's on board with that. Good. So, uh, yeah. uh, so guys, the rest of you, um, with the uh, escorting party, and obviously Neris is on her way back to uh, to Hilberg. Let's not forget about the third split in the party. Sorry, the second split in the party. So, um, <clears throat> the rest of you, uh, escorting your prisoners, how... Have you got any plans on how to help them get over the uh, obstacles? Now, the the uh, the second test, fine. Uh, the third test, you know, uh, from seeing before, is all about timing, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. But it's just really descending the mountain that's going to be a bit of a challenge. So, have you got any thoughts that's on how you're going to achieve that? You said Ara Crocker were going to come help us. That's true. Uh, I did say that. Um, that'll help. Uh, so. If you go to Master Talon and ask ask her, she she'd be happy to send some Aracocra to assist. In fact, she she actually accompanies them as well, she's recognizing you need somebody who who speaks the common tongue. So uh, she comes along. They all have nets and they offer the nets to the prisoners to, you know, which is how they got them here in the first place. Don't forget. They look the 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 once prisoners look 
quite apprehensive, especially Will, the young boy. I don't, I don't want to go with the bird people. Can't I? Can I go with you? Are you talking to? No. Honestly, he's talking to the, to the, to the adults. Yeah. Honestly, uh, we fell down this a lot, and we're pros, so uh, I would recommend the the much safer route down. Really, like l lots of near-death experiences. I don't, I don't want to go back in the net. He looks over like for help to, to somebody else other than Leo Brin. Um, Brina will will walk up to him. She was the one that got him out, so she she knows him a little bit. Um, I've I've been flying with the Eric Hooker quite a bit, and it's actually quite fun when you're not, you know, a prisoner. How about I go with you? Would you feel okay about it then? What? Is it is it fun? Oh um, yeah, you get to see so much. The view is great, and let them climb and hurt their legs. You were in a in a thing in a in a bag. I was, and it takes a bit of time to bake. I'm sorry, but it's still fun. I promise. I'll do the same with you. Well. Does that mean if I do it, then I'm like you? I'm a, a, a adventurer, a, a hero. Absolutely. Okay. Just don't even need a persuasion check. That's all you did. Okay. Fine. I'm gonna be a hero. Fine. Let's let's do it. And he reluctantly gets in uh, gets into one of the nets. Yeah, and I'll make sure to pick an arrow cocker right next to him and climb into a net as well. Cool. So there are many as people in many as, nets. As he starts to go, I'm gonna go. Yeah, our, our way isn't as fun. And if we're right next to a cliff, I'm just gonna jump off and I'm gonna scream bloody murder all the way down as I feather fall down. <laughs> Fair enough. Good call. Feather falls fun too. So yeah, our, our, our way it's not that safe. Just jump off. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Deliberately <laughs> over doppering the scream as well to get yeah. like, imagining a scream that's, that's traveling at about five feet uh, every couple of seconds. It's like, yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> imagine <laughs> Seth actually hits the deck and continues screaming. Oh, yeah, I, it's a, I, only I didn't look where I was going, it's only a 10 foot drop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, so with the with the now the prisoners can all get in the nets. That's that's perfectly fine. Um, there's more than enough netting for for that and Aracocra, and that's how they got here. So at Brina as well, taken care of. That means three of you are left to then descend the mountain. So the three of you, unless you have any other plans, would need to make um, athletics checks to descend safely down the mountains. I'll catch you. 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 Are you going to jump, Seth? I'm already down. Okay, yep, he's jumped. Feather. He's featherfall down. Featherfall. Leaving Malar and Leobrin, the probably the two most fragile in terms of this eventuality at the top. Like, hmm. Once we get past all the big obstacles are done, we should have a relatively straight run at, at a long rest at some point. Yes. <laughs> Okie dokie, let, uh, let me just double check. Depending where on where you want to long now, rest, of course. <laughs> well, well, my gods are about to get, uh, give me a third level spell slot that I can use to give both myself and Leobrin advantage on strength checks. Okay, ah, good enhance ability on the pair of you, yeah? Nice. nice. Very comprehensive answer right there. Some good uh, stuff. Just Leobrin, if you can mm -hmm. do me for the favour of not dying, I have uh, no way of bringing you back. So I'd greatly appreciate it. Hi. Uh, may first be with us. Would also appreciate not dying. Um, hasn't happened yet, though. <laughs> Hurry up! Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Mock the cleric uh, at your you... actual peril, guys. <laughs> you have advantage. I have advantage. It's an athletics check, yeah? Climbing is athletics. Jump, 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 jump. Well... Uh, praise Festia for advantage. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's it. 20 on the dice, so 22. Oh, yes. And Mala? 15. 15 is the highest. Okay, good job for that advantage, eh? 
So the two of you, uh, yeah, abseil down relatively expediently and uh, without incident down, down the mountainside to the first level where you join Seth. He then jumps off again, being the, you know, base jumping lunatic that he is. Um, well, he's got feather falls, so I suppose it's fine. While well, you two then abseil again, and yeah, it's, you, you kind of feel very comfortable with this. In fact, if you are you um, detaching the ropes as you go, or are you leaving them in place for when you eventually return? Oh, we've got to come back, haven't we? Bloody hell! Uh, we have to come this way. We not go a different way. <laughs> Is that not another way? <laughs> what about that track over there? Uh, I, I'm, <laughs> uh, let, we'll pick him up as we go. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So you can, uh, yeah, take the ropes down with you as you go. Take the, the pigeons <coughs> out and so on as you're going down should stop any intruders going up there so that's good and eventually as the sun sets uh, you guys all reach the bottom reconvening with your aracocra um, and uh, their charges not far away from the cave that you remember you left fleeting and the die capybara and uh, laos uh, along with horsey should i say inside i mean i definitely heading Go check on fleet thing. Yeah. Well, what about your you horse? He's been a dick. <laughs> By which you mean he's standing up for his own name. He doesn't get to choose that. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Reginald. Poor Reginald. So you guys uh, <laughs> head on back uh, um, to the cave. And you find, yep, as as Neris did, uh, fleeting, hanging upside down uh, from his uh, uh, from the cave, looking quite at peace, but no longer in the bedroll that you put him in before. And the horses are kind of milling. Uh, the horse and the capybara are milling around. You notice Laos is gone. The black horse, just the chestnut pony left. Ah. Fleeting, glad you're glad you're safe. We've you, you missed all all the fun. Well, I was dead. But like a minute. It's good to see you as well. <laughs> Hi, Fleeting. Hello. <coughs> Look what I got from Keith. No, I should have called us off. I kept it blue for you. Awesome. That's great. I lost my hammer. Oh. Call it back. I tried. How do you lose a hammer? We've, we've been gone for like eight hours. I think it's too far away for me to call it back. Wait, didn't we bring the hammer with us from the river? You did, yeah. You left it with fleeting. Remember the alarm triggered and something went through. Have you... Well, I'm sure we can find it. Just keep calling it back when we get to Hil as we're on our way to Hilberg. Like uh, every ten seconds, just go hammer, <coughs> hammer. That sounds good. Fleeting, have you been outside the cave at all? No, I. Uh, when I woke up, I saw you'd all gone, and the hammer had gone, and the horses were here. So I thought I'd stay here, because you'd have to come back for the horses. Unless you didn't like the horses, but I thought you liked the horses. That's a, a very, very smart trail of thought. Are you okay? I mean, I did just die. Uh, one of the horses are missing. Yeah, oh, um, Neris, she came pie. Great! What did, what did she say? Uh, she said she's going to Hilburg. We had a bit of an awkward conversation. A normal conversation. I don't know what you mean. Cool. Let's go to Hilberg. Um, Seth? Yeah? He, he didn't leave the cave, but my alarm spell went off, so someone went, came in. Well, could it have been the horses? Well, they wouldn't have taken the hammer. No, I meant to set off the alarm. 
Well, sure, but the fact that the hammer is gone as well probably implies someone else was here. Well, I don't really, we don't really have a way to track, do we? Wait, can anyone, can any, does anyone know find hammer? <laughs> if you've got locate object, I suppose. But I don't think any of you would have that prepared, you know? Um, I mean, you can obviously try a survival check if you want. Uh, sure. If, if any of you want I to rolled, give that a go. I rolled, a, I, rolled a, I rolled a two if anyone smarter than me wants to try. So, everyone. Anyone else? Sorry, uh, what, what was the check we're rolling? Uh, survival. Survival. So mine is two plus zero. So I'm no, going to stand actually, stronger at a two. Actually, plus three. I think we've all agreed that we can't track shit without that. That is, that so is a flaw. Know. <laughs> so 15 for Brina. Okay. <coughs> Brina, um, you know, you do see um, in the... Because it was raining recently, so the, the ground is still a bit damp, and you can see that there are um, some uh, traces of footprints leading into the cave. Uh, however, they seem to stop abruptly uh, not far away from... Uh, from Fleeting's bedroll. Um, I'll cast Son of Truth on Fleeting. Okay. He's high on charisma, so I'll probably pass, but... Yep, he passed. Yeah, okay. Um, he has to try is everything alright? Uh... Fleeting, someone came in here while you were unconscious, I think. And this time he fails. Oh. Okay. What happened to you? I don't know. I was dead, I think. I woke and up and the hammer was gone. And you haven't seen anyone come in? Nope. Oh, I did. I saw the um, I saw the Diacapabira come in and Laos did for a little while and he was eating some of my rations. But other than that, no. Okay. It's him, guys. Um, but I'll point out the tracks. Um, something walked in and did not walk out. Uh, they seem to be human-sized footprints, just, just to note. Wait, so something slot. walked in but not out? Yep. Look, and I'll point at the tracks that go all the way to the bedroll and stop there. How deep is the cave? It's pretty shallow, to be fair. Um, it only goes in maybe 15 feet or so um, before pitting you know, the end. Can, uh, can I make a perception check to see if we see anyone or like... Yeah, sure. Traces of invisibility? Natural one. <laughs> I mean, you for a moment, Seth, you think... No, in fact, you're certain that there is a trap door on the in, at the very inside of this cave. And so, oh, just yeah. blast. Pff, just dust and bits of stone fly everywhere. It's a very tough cool. trap door, um, it seems. The trap door didn't open. There's no... Let's go. Shut up. No one. <laughs> so what are you guys doing now? I'm leaving the ejector that I just... I'll just blast the floor. Are you... Because you said you were heading back to Hilbert, but I assume that means you're going to the meeting point first, right? Yes, we're going to the meeting yeah. point to get to Canaris. Uh, cool. To get to Hilberg. Um... Yep. I, like, but between... Um... Where we are and Hilberg is also Abrina's home, isn't it? Because we met on the way. Sorry, that sorry. Right? Say that again? Yeah, Bre Brina. Abrina's home is like on the way between Oh, that's Hilberg. right. Yes, yes, it is. Because she might need their help for brewing the potion with the recipe. Yeah, I mean, do you, yeah, it depends what you guys I mean, want to do. If you want Brina to go off on a detour and meet up with the rest of you later, or. 
or you go with her it's obviously entirely up to you guys what you're doing um but well, while you okay. while you're having a, a a chat and a think before you make your next move guys just want to catch up with Neris very quickly uh so Neris, rallying on laos uh, heading back to Hilburg. Um, now you know from riding on the way that it's going to take a, a while. Uh, it's going to take at least a day. So are you going? Are you planning to stop overnight somewhere? Or are you just going to continuously ride until you get to Hilburg? You muted. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Martin. You. Yeah. Uh, so can Lau how the, how's Laos looking? Fresh, ready to go. Um, yeah, I'll just keep going. Cool. Uh, I so, can eat and ride. So if you could make a, uh, a constitution check for me, please. I'll do so. F oh, and make one for Laos as well. I think you've got his details on your page. Natural 20. Natural 20. For Woo! Neris. Neris, you do not suffer any exhaustion, which is a... And 16 thankful. for Laos. That's enough for Laos as well. So you ride continuously. Uh, Thank you, Dice Jesus. Without stopping. By the time you arrive in Hilburg the next day... Um, it's maybe lunchtime when you arrive and um, yeah, Laos looks pretty <laughs> pretty tired and steam wafting from him definitely needs some water um, but <clears throat> I'm you just can... gonna low key arrive I wanna, I wanna arrive like not down main street I wanna like take the shortest possible sneaky route to with a, sneaky with a horse route to to my uncle's house the, the one thing of note you um, on the road was you went past what was left of uh, Flaming Jacks and you note, noted the dwarf that you guys came across earlier has just been picking through some of the remains. Looks like he's trying to find something, but it doesn't look very important. Um, but yeah, yep. you can low-key move to your, get to your uncle's house. He's busy yeah. himself in the workshop as usual. And just walk up to him and be like, shh, don't say anything. <laughs> Keep your voice down. I'm not here. You haven't seen me. But I am here, so hi. How are hi. you? How are you feeling? Are you okay? Are you feeling better? Can I speak now or Yes. <laughs> right. Uh yeah, I'm fine. Uh just getting busy, you know. Um glad to see you're in one piece. Still wearing that smoky black outfit, huh? It's a thing, okay? Just go with it. Um, sure. So, sure. you're not hurt anymore? You're not... You're okay? <laughs> I'm as good as I can be. Okay. You know, grief takes well, a while. <laughs> let me tell you... No, it's not, it's not the grief. It's You got beat up. Like. Oh, oof, these wounds will heal. No worry. Okay, um, well, I can tell you those guys won't be bothering you anymore. Um, okay. so I kind of just need to rest up and after this, you probably won't see me for a while. Okay. It's a whole thing. But for now, can I, without anybody knowing or anything, just get some food and I need to rest. I need to, I've sure. ridden all night. Also, Laos is back. So. Well, great. I mean, I gave him to you, and I'm glad to see. <laughs> like, I brought the car out. back, Dad. Um, <laughs> it's not scratched. <laughs> I knew it wouldn't let you down. Um, no, it before you did uh, not. Be before you leave again and don't get enough sleep, <clears throat> um, or well, you know, not sleep, <laughs> trancing. Anyway, rest. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just don't forget your. Uh, your uh, staff next time. Your family would have wanted you to have it. Just to remind you who you are. Of course. All right. Well, if you want to scamper on upstairs, I guess you'll want me to bring you breakfast up, huh? Uh, you'd be so kind. He just rolls his eyes, brushes some of the sawdust off of himself, and heads towards the <laughs> kitchen. Thanks, Uncle. Don't mention it. I know I won't. <laughs> she All right, just smiles so... and goes upstairs and plonks. Yeah, okay. our family dynamic is uh, whoo, rich. <laughs> <laughs> this this is a uh, quality quality roleplay right there. 
That's what it's, uh, <laughs> that's what we came for. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she would like to long rest. Yep, yep. You can you can begin your long rest. Not a problem at all. Um, Excellent. Okay, so the rest of you are going to be heading towards well, heading to the meet. Maybe detouring via um, uh, uh, via Swerthaven, depending on what you decide to do. I will leave that with you. But before we finish today, because we'll, we'll pick that up next time. Before we leave today, Brucon, um, being left alone in the in the eerie with a bunch of Aracocra. What are you? What are you up to? What do you want to do? So this is this is you've, you've snapped to Brucon while Talon is out um, ferrying the. It's a very good point. I completely miss. I completely forgot that. However, once the um, Aracocra have dropped off the prisoners at the bottom of the mountain, they do return. So eventually, yeah, she will return to you, well, and then we can snap back I to think, you. That's cool. Well, while, while she's away, Brucon could do with a short rest. Um, sure. At the very least, so he will just do that. Um, yeah. And no then, problem. for whatever you know, whatever time he's got um, loose, he's going to spend inspecting the um, the. Interior of the Eyrie, uh, and in particular, so we're in we're in like a um, is it an open topped cave? Yes. It must be because they the women's flew in through. This exactly top. it. Yeah, imagine the inside of a volcano, um, inactive yeah. one, obviously. I reckon just for some just for for kicks, um, Brucon's going to try a, a spot of um, uh, of um, not caving. What's the um, uh, Spelunking? No, well, no, going up, not down. Um, oh, uh, yeah, it's climbing, reverse, bouldering, reverse time sailing. Yeah, bouldering. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, anyway, yeah, he's, he's just going to kind of um, do a bit, you know, uh, a, a bit of a kind of we'll call it like a cool down kind of thing. He's, he's just going to um, do a bit of um, exploring the, uh, the walls and so on in there as a kind of his, his own weird version of meditating. Like Sure. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, if you're going to try some... Uh, is this a Brucon style uh, where you're trying to oh, nimble ninja course. way up? Yeah, of course. So it's the acrobatics, of course. I don't know why I have it any doubt. I was, uh, no, no, I'm glad you asked, but um, <laughs> yes, acrobatics, absolutely. So... Ooh, that's not a good roll at all. That's a nine. Uh, it seems the day's uh, events, uh, or perhaps the fact that you'll be, you have an audience this time, because the Dragonborn are watching you pretty intently as you uh, start trying to ninja way up the uh, <laughs> the outside yep. of of the area, and you do fall down um, a couple of times, obviously managing to pop yourself back up onto two feet swift, uh, swiftly with your nimble abilities. Uh, yeah. But yes, yes. Uh, eventually, eventually, with some effort, you manage to get to a, a higher position to uh, to meditate. Cool. Yeah, Brookon's going to um, take up the lotus position in a in a spot with a nice view. Uh, he'll he'll take a quick glug of whatever hard spirits are left over in his um, in his trouble um, hip flask, and uh, yeah, commune with the balance and all that jazz. That definitely uh, that would definitely constitute a, sh a short rest, and the time just flies by uh, as you as you come back to consciousness from your meditative state. Uh, standing in front of you is uh, no, sorry, in fact, cross-legged next to you in the similar lotus position. Uh, you feel the presence of uh, Master Talon. This is this is this campaign's version of um, uh, Poe and Uguay from Country <laughs> Panda. Yes, maybe. <laughs> I'm super into it. Um, I watched Kung Fu Panda 3 over Christmas, by the way. It's really good. Um, cool. So, yeah, Brucon kind of like surfaces and sort of looks over and he kind of does the old, you know, peering around and, and kind of like, uh, is, she, is she with us? Is she, you know, he's, he's, he doesn't want to kind of break the break the concentration or anything, but he's also just doing a kind of subtle, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. give it a minute and, and just kind of goes back. But he's, he's going he's gonna to wait for an opportune moment. He doesn't want to yeah. kind of break the break the mood or anything, but he'll wait for an opportune mo moment to. Well, it's funny you say talent. that actually, because after you have that 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 moment of like leaning over, checking to see what she's doing, and then returning to your as you return to your lotus position, you hear you hear her voice. Uh, I gather you wanted something of me. Is it training that you seek? Oh. Oh well, I'm always up for. I'm, I'm always interested in training. I, I should. Uh, I should very much like to learn um, 
more of your your philosophy but uh, I, yes I, I did have a, I had another um, thing on my mind um, and it's, it's it's a little odd for me but it seems like it might be uh, more sort of up your your sort of street um, I was dreaming of this place uh, some a little while ago and I'm not aware of ever having been anywhere near here before um, and in particular I was I I remember quite distinctly seeing the the, the sort of uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if what you would refer to it as but the, I, I think of it as the seesaw on the on the path the trials um, I remember seeing it quite distinctly and, and there was a real there was a there was a kind of this is important um, sort of feel to the whole thing um, but but this is, this is well outside my uh, my area so uh, i don't know if you if any of this sounds familiar to you if you're you uh you had a vision you say uh, i suppose you could put it that way yes you are you are a guardian of the light are you not uh i'm uh, i'm not aware of ever having described myself that way i suppose you could a follower of the sure, light yes. uh, a follower of the light and the dark from the bark fang monastery Oh, yes, absolutely, yes. Yes, I'm a student of the Park Park Monastery. Indeed. Well, the seesaw, I would believe to be a balance. And Makes an out-of-kilter seesaw suggests the balance was off. Perhaps... You know, when you put it like that, it sounds really obvious. Perhaps the balance has now been restored. Maybe your next vision might have the balance restored. But as a guardian of the light, you were waiting for... You, you wished to return the balance of light and dark. There was a bright light here earlier. Perhaps that is the light being restored. Hmm. Interesting. Where might these visions be coming from? You, is it from the balance itself? Is it from, because of, of my studies? What, 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 what gives? I don't know. I, I was, I've been a... Uh, an alumnus of the monastery for a little while. I have to say, I don't remember this ever happening previously. I cannot say for yours, but my visions, I believe, come from the god of air, from the elemental plane where we wish to return. Hmm. If you have something you follow, perhaps that is what is guiding you. Brookham falls into a into a silence that lasts some time of that um, and then when he breaks it he uh, he goes that's very encouraging thank you you um, were a formidable you, were about you i yes i was you were a formidable warrior brucon um if i can call you that oh, i uh, yeah. And I see you have one of our weapons. I certainly do. Do you know, I did a brief moment, I had forgotten that I had the tonfa. I'm very glad you reminded me, but yes, I do. Welcome. Yeah, Brucon, Brucon pulls out the tonfa and um, and goes, oh yes, this uh, here is a very interesting uh, uh, construction. I've, I've never come across something like this before. Uh, are, you, are you versed in its use? I am, though I am not the most skilled practitioner. There are some here who can train you with such a weapon. As a guardian of the light, I believe it will be a very useful weapon for you, for it is a balanced weapon, for it defends as much as, as it is used for adversity. Brookon sort of hefts it, tosses it in his hand a few times and kind of goes, I should be very interested to learn how that works. Uh, well, I, you, you've been enormously helpful. Uh, I, I should very much like to learn from you, but uh, I don't wish to intrude upon your time. If, if, um, if there's someone who is, is willing and able to uh, show me the sticks, I suppose, um, I, I should uh, very much like to meet and uh, study with you. Certainly. You may uh, train with the other novices. Not a problem. You do not need to uh, do the test as the uh, other uh, initiates would need to, for I feel liberating the uh, the eerie is a, a testament enough to your abilities. But you may feel free to train alongside the, the novices uh, with the art of the tonfa. The tonfa? Right. That is what it is called. Uh, 
Brookon um, does the, the old um, the, the handspring 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 jump up and um, and then turns the motion into a bow. So he kind of goes whoop, whoop, and then he kind of folds over in the in the middle and, and does a, a formal bow to Master Talon and says um, thank you again. Uh, before b before uh, I leave here. Um, however that ends up happening um, maybe we'll have a chance to speak again I I look forward to it would you like a lift down to the ground uh, how, how high up is Brucon right now uh, you're about 20 feet up Brucon says inclines his head and says thank you but uh, no and backflips off and uh, despite her very serene appearance you do hear a chuckle as you, as you flip down to the ground ready to begin your training and i think that uh, begin your training and i think that is where we should leave things for today's uh, session before we have a brucon montage um <laughs> cement that image in your mind for that will be what will be happening ahead of next time uh cool so we're split in a few different ways but i'm sure we'll see the party uh, eventually knit back together and i'll i'll liaise with you guys over the next week or so just to kind of work out how we'll best do this to fit everyone um and uh, yeah thank you very much um that's it for the many lands today this uh will be ha join us on friday hopefully it's, it's tba but should be on friday 5 p.m for a uh, another campaign diary to catch you up on everything that's happened in this session and the last one and of course subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't already because the cage next session session eight titled love will be dropping on our youtube monday that's uh, this coming monday obviously at 6 p.m until then thank you guys so much have a great week thank you for staring intently at the camera there dk uh and uh, and stay safe everyone bye bye, bye. bye.